During the Pope's recent visit to America, I had the privilege of being on uh, as a commentator for NBC News and uh, MSNBC. And I was on for extended periods with uh, Brian Williams and with uh, Chris Matthews. Brian, of course, uh, up to recent years uh, was the anchor of NBC Nightly News, now at MSNBC. Chris Matthews, the host of uh, Hardball. And uh, I must say, both men are very good at what they do, namely keeping a conversation going for two or three hours among a variety of people. Uh, like most people who are good at what they do, they make it look very easy. But try that sometime. Try just to keep a conversation uh, going, well organized, interesting, lively for two or three hours. So they're, they're great at what they do. And actually, I very much enjoyed being with, uh, with both of them. But I want to share um, a moment I had with each one of these uh, commentators that I think says something about uh, the church and the church's uh, teaching. So Chris Matthews, um, like a lot of Catholics of his uh, generation, is more liberally minded when it comes to issues, especially of women in the church. And a couple times, you know, his, his job is to be provocative. And he said, uh, you know, Bishop, isn't it just a, a matter of, of simple justice? I mean, why can't women be priests? And let's face it, men are management and the women do all the grunt work in the church. And one time he said to me, isn't it odd that, that all the bishops are Republicans and all the nuns are Democrats? Well, again, he was trying to be provocative and stir the pot. but what I tried to do is follow the advice of um, the great philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein, who, who famously said, sometimes the key to solving a problem in philosophy is to let the fly out of the fly bottle. It's a neat little image. What he means is a lot of the problems we have in philosophy are, are a matter of um, getting stuck around a couple of, of maybe binary options. And we just keep bumping our head against the side of the bottle. We're setting the whole thing in a different context changing the whole uh, setting for the question can actually let the fly out of the fly bottle. So in this case, women in the church, what I suggested was we get hung up on the issue of power and priesthood as though the priesthood is the focus of power. I urge Chris Matthews and his millions of listeners to say, go back to Vatican II. The great teaching of Vatican II on the universal call to holiness on the role of the laity in the church. Now, what is that role? The role of the laity is to sanctify the world. Having been sanctified by the priests, you know, who through the sacraments, through preaching and so on, sanctify them, now their job as great Catholic teachers and lawyers and physicians and writers and commentators and politicians and so on, their job now is to sanctify the social order, to sanctify the world. That's where the power of the laity lies, see. Not so much in fussing around with, with the inner ecclesial power, but the power to change the world. That's what Vatican II wanted. And then I urged him and his listeners to look at some of the really great female saints in recent years, recent centuries now. Go back to um, Bernadette of Lourdes, the 19th century. The Little Flower, end of the 19th century. Mother Teresa in our own time. Mother Catherine Drexel. All those women were far more powerful than 99% of the priests and bishops of their time. Now why? Because they were saints. And being a saint, someone whose holiness sanctifies the world, that's the key to real power. See, I think if we get off of the question of priesthood, that priesthood is the key to power, we can actually let the fly out of the fly bottle. Here's the second instance now I want to share with you, this one dealing with Brian Williams. Um, it was the very end of our coverage, the very end of the Pope's Mass in Philly. And Brian Williams was on now anchoring a whole variety of people, commentators. And he said, you know, isn't it kind of funny with the Synod on the family coming up at the time it was coming up the following week? He said um, that people without families are the ones who are making all the rules about families. So, you know, the priests and bishops who are celibate, what do they know about family life? So they went around, a number of people, you know, commented on that, most approvingly, most saying, oh yeah, that's a good point. Well, I wasn't called on, but I just felt obligated to jump in. So I said, you know, may I speak as the only one on the panel who is actually celibate? And um, I said, 
Brian, if I can use a, a adage from the uh, scholastic philosophers, nego maiorem, which means I deny the major premise. In other words, I deny the major premise of your observation that priests are not family men. And then I, I drew attention to this ring, which I got when I was ordained a bishop. And I said, this ring is a wedding ring that binds me to my people. In fact, we're explicitly told in, in the manual for uh, bishops that you should never take this ring off. In the same way a, a devoted husband wouldn't take off his wedding ring. It's a sign that I'm a family man, that I'm married and I have children. I have spiritual children. And then I quoted, I was happy I was able to do this, I quoted to my mentor, Cardinal George, who used to say all the time out at the, the seminary, you are not bachelors, you're all married men, and you have children, spiritual children. The trouble he felt with a lot of uh, the, the uh, scandals in the priesthood was priests start falling into the trap of thinking they're bachelors. Basically, you know, untethered, free, unmarried men. No, you're married. You're married to the church because you're in the persona Christi, and Christ is the bridegroom of his bride, the church. So my point there was, don't think of priests as not family men. On the contrary, priests are very intensely uh, family men. This too now is a Vatican II teaching. Vatican II stressed how celibacy and marriage are co-implicative. They're, they're mutually reinforcing. They're not rival states of affairs, not rival ways of being. But the stronger celibacy is, the stronger marriage is. The stronger marriage is, the stronger celibacy is. The two are mutually implicative. Carol Wojtyla, when he came back from Vatican II, as Archbishop of Krakow, led the people of that uh, diocese in a careful study of the documents of Vatican II. I have long felt that that was a key to the reception of Vatican II in, uh, in his diocese. They got it. In a way, I think a lot of people in our country didn't get it. I would maintain that the documents of Vatican II are still largely unread. What people got was the amorphous, you know, spirit of Vatican II. They got instincts that, that supposedly came out of Vatican II. Read the documents. What you're going to find is a stress on the mutuality of celibacy and married life, and you're going to find both celibacy and married life are in service of the sanctification of the world. And that's where real power lies. See, I think the key to letting a lot of these flies out of the fly bottle is a careful reading of Vatican II.